Bumpers help protect robots from collision damage during competitions. They're a critical part of your machine. We're going to show you one of the many ways you can assemble the AndyMark 2019-2020 bumper kit to the am one for u 4 chassis. Step 1 consists of deciding what style of bumpers you want. The option many teams choose is a full wrap using two C-shaped halves. Often, a mechanism requires space at one end of the frame, so an opening is created. One of the legs of each bumper half can be shortened to create an opening in the bumpers. In this walkthrough, we're showing a full wrap using two C-shaped halves on the am one for u 4 in a long configuration. The plywood for backing bumpers is 3 quarter inches thick and 5 inches tall. For our friends using the metric system, this is around 18 millimeters. You can take a 4x8 sheet of plywood and rip it into 5 inch tall sections to prepare for the individual bumpers. A table saw, jigsaw, or even a hacksaw can be used to make these cuts. We recommend cabinet grade plywood so it can withstand a full season of wear and tear. Be sure to check the game manual and ensure the wood you've chosen is legal for competition. On the topic of supplies, other tools needed are staple gun, drill with a Phillips bit or a Phillips screwdriver, scissors, and a serrated knife or a hacksaw for cutting the pool noodles. Since we've decided on a full wrap of two C-shaped halves, we're going to make six planks for each bumper color, two long planks and four short planks. The long side is 32.25 inches. We'll cut four planks at this size. The shorter pieces will extend past the long pieces to add strength in the corners for impacts. We also need a small gap between the bumper halves for easy installation and change between matches. The narrow side measures 27 inches. That halved is 13 and a half inches. But before we cut eight short planks, there's some math to do. We'll add three quarters of an inch to cover the long plank and subtract one quarter of an inch to ensure we have gap between the bumper halves. We'll cut eight planks at 14 inches long. To recap, we should have three pieces of plywood for each C-shaped half, six for one color, and 12 for a full complement of robot bumpers. For corner style bumpers, you'll have eight planks per color, and if you did one bumper per robot face, you'll have four planks per color. With all of the pieces cut, we can start the assembly. To make bumper corners more rigid, you can use an angled bracket, such as AM3233, to join together the planks. But this is not required. Now it's time for the most important part, the mounting brackets. The front brackets should be flush with the top of the plywood and one quarter of an inch away from the side edge. This ensures the bracket holes line up with the holes in the AM1 for U4. This geometry is specific for a full wrap bumper on the long configuration. Corner or custom bumpers may not need this specific spacing. I like to mark the holes before drilling to help make sure I have the part in the right place. During assembly, other brackets are a great tool to ensure that the front bracket is flush with the top. Use three wood screws to secure the bracket. Piloting the holes can help prevent splitting the wood. The side brackets go on the long plank. These brackets must be placed a whole number of inches away from the long plank edge. For full wrap bumpers on a U4, we're going 11 inches from the edge. This can be any hole number you choose. This ensures the bracket holes line up with the A1 for U4 holes. When securing the side brackets, use the same tricks as before to help you align the bracket. Now for the pool noodles. Cut two noodles the length of the long segment, short plank edge to short plank edge. The short noodles will extend from the other short plank edge to the outside edge of a long noodle. I'm going to mark the edge with a black marker and use a saw to cut them. A serrated knife could also be used. Six noodle pieces will be used for each C bumper half two long and four short. 24 total pieces will make a full red and blue set. Now before we get to the fabric, we're going to secure the noodles with some duct tape. When taping, less is more. Rip off just enough tape to secure the plywood, wrap around the noodles, and secure back to the plywood. 
two pieces of duct tape per side is plenty. Let's talk about bumper numbers. There are so many kinds of bumper numbers. Embroidery, sewn on, iron on, you can even spray paint them on with stencils. Before you proceed though, you need to know what you'll use. Take a look at the directions for your numbers, as many kinds of numbers must be applied to the fabric before the fabric is stapled to the plywood. Now, on to attaching the fabric. Set your bumper half on some material with just a little extra hanging over. Rotate the bumper assembly to see how much fabric is needed. Give yourself a little extra and cut. With the length out of the way, we need to trim the width. We will be removing the brackets to attach the fabric, so it's important to leave some of the bracket holes exposed. Fold the fabric around the bumper to see how much to trim away. Once you're happy with the trims made, remove the side brackets. Start with the midsection of the bumper first. Pull the two flaps tightly together and staple each flap. Work your way towards the short sections, stapling every few inches. Avoid stapling where the side brackets will go. Once you've stapled to the short sections, you can reattach the side brackets. At the corner, make cuts to allow for folds in the fabric. Fold the corners in for a test fit, and if it folds nicely, go ahead and staple in place. Remove the front brackets from the short section and continue stapling every few inches. Again, avoid placing staples under where the bracket would go. After stapling most of the way down, the front bracket can be reattached. If there's excess fabric, it can be trimmed. Fold the fabric together like wrapping a gift, pull it around and secure in place. Repeat this whole process three more times for a complete set of red and blue bumpers. When it comes time to secure the bumpers to the robot, we've got you covered. 3.75 inch long screws and wing nuts are used to secure the brackets to the U4 frame. Remember that the side brackets nest into the outside plate and the front brackets sit on top of the end plates. This hardware isn't your only option, however. Feel free to use other hardware or design your own solution that works best for your robot. Since there's an infinite number of ways to build a robot and mechanisms, the way we've prescribed building bumpers may not work for you. You can always adjust the locations of brackets as needed to make room for other robot components like an elevator or a battery tray. Keep in mind, the rules for bumpers and frame perimeter can change from year to year. So always check the manual and make sure your plans will be legal. We hope this walkthrough was helpful for you. If you have any questions, you can always reach us by emailing support at antimark.com. Good luck, and we'll see you at the competition.